Hello everyone, it is time for another Valentine's Day special. Somehow I've gotten into the tradition of doing a Valentine's Day special each year. I used to make visual novel games because I would be single on Valentine's Day, but last year I made a story time video about my first date with my now husband. If you want to see how my husband and I started dating, I recommend watching that video. But as a little refresher, my husband's name is Joshua, but I call him Josh, and we met on an online dating site. This was a long distance relationship since we lived a handful of hours away from each other. So at the end of the last story time video I said, My boyfriend and I have been together a little over 6 months now and we'll be sharing our first Valentine's Day together. We're going to dress up and go out to dinner. So those were our plans for Valentine's Day. But leading up to Valentine's Day, we had continued the process of long distance dating. We would video chat and we would take turns visiting each other each month. However, things started to change in January when we started to discuss getting married. And for those of you who really pay attention to details, you might be thinking, whoa, you started dating in July and you're talking about marriage in January? That's only six months later. And yeah, we had only been dating for six months and we were talking about marriage. But during those six months, we spent hours upon hours talking to each other. Being that we were long distance, the only way for us to really connect was over video chat. And we would spend about two to three hours talking to each other almost every night. We would tell each other about our days, discuss how we were feeling, sometimes play some games online together, do a book study and end things with a prayer and saying how much we missed each other. <laughs> We loved being able to see each other in person, but it made going back to being long distance harder and harder each time. We more seriously started to discuss engagement because at the start of the new year, literally New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, Josh and I had a long hard talk. We both expressed that we felt like the distance was straining our relationship and we didn't feel like we could keep doing the long distance thing. We both knew that we needed to take our relationship to the next step. And we came to the conclusion that the next step was engagement and him moving to my hometown. You might be thinking, Becca, why didn't you move? You're a YouTuber and can work from wherever. And that is true, and it's something Josh and I talked about a lot, and I mean a lot. While technically, it would be easier for me to move because of work, it would be really hard on me because I had never lived on my own and was still living with my family at the time. Like I said in my last video, I dealt with anxiety a lot and didn't go out much. Because of this, my siblings were my best friends. I am also the oldest and feel almost like a mom to a lot of them. Many of the younger ones even call me their second mom. <laughs> I was always very open with Josh, even from the very beginning, that I didn't feel like I could move away from my family. So after a lot of thought and long talks, we decided that for work, Josh would transfer to a location that is closer to my hometown. And thankfully his transfer request went through without much hassle. The hard part was finding a place for him to live, but we will come back to this. Uh, so fast forward a month later, we are now in February. It was going to be Josh's turn to visit me, and during this visit we would be able to celebrate Valentine's Day together. And going into this, I knew that he was going to propose on Valentine's Day. I knew this because a few days before Josh was going to come visit, he wasn't really acting like himself, and I was worried about him. We ended up having a bit of an argument over text. He wasn't acting like himself for a handful of reasons, and I won't go into all of them. But we ended up on a call together while he was on a break at work, and he told me that he planned to propose to me on Valentine's Day and that he was nervous. I asked him why, and he said because you might say no. My heart melted when he said those words, and I told him that he didn't have to worry about that. So basically, he kind of proposed to me, and I kind of said yes. <laughs> After that talk, he felt much better and we were able to move forward and that's how I knew he was going to propose to me on Valentine's Day. Anyways, now it's Valentine's Day. Josh had been in my hometown for a few days at this point and we started the day with him picking me up and we went to look at a house that Josh could possibly rent. Josh had worked out with his job that he would transfer to the new location in April, so we were looking for places that would be available at that time. We decided to start looking at houses to rent because the apartment complexes we were in talks with didn't have any available units at the time. And the first house we looked at was a nice rental, but a bit out of our budget and also had a bit more space than we really needed. But we kept it in mind as an option. Also, the plan was that Josh would rent the place that we would both live in once we were married. So we wanted a place that would have enough space for the both of us eventually. 
After looking at the rental, Josh dropped me off at home and he went back to the hotel. We wanted to change into fancier clothes for dinner, even though our plan was to go to Culver's. <laughs> now I know that Culver's might not be everyone's dream Valentine's Day spot, but Culver's is kind of special to us because we went to one on our first date. Plus, we just think the food is really yummy. So we go to Culver's, order our food, and sit down at the larger booth in the corner. At this point, I was feeling nervous and excited. I knew that Josh was going to propose today, but I wasn't totally sure of how or when he would, but I felt like he was going too soon. We started to exchange Valentines. I got him a card, some candies, and a peanut butter and jelly plushie. To explain why I got him this, on one of our early on dates, a song came on in the car that was about peanut butter and jelly and how they were super happy being together. And from then on, peanut butter and jelly was kind of special to us. Now it was Josh's turn to give me a gift, but before I opened mine, he reached into his coat pocket saying that he needed chapstick. His hand fumbled in his coat pocket and he held the chapstick in a kind of funny way. Looking back, I now know he was grabbing the ring. But me being me, I didn't notice at the time. <laughs> so I grab the present out of the bag and I can instantly tell that it's a precious moment. However, the tissue paper obscured what the precious moment was. I unwrap one side to see a girl with a pencil and on the other side was a boy holding a sign that says, please check yes or no, with a little engagement ring next to him. I was so surprised and I turned to Josh to find him holding out the ring. He said, will you be the peanut butter to my jelly? And I, of course, said yes. Oh, and did I mention that the ring was actually a spoon? <laughs> you see, Josh had ordered my engagement ring a good few weeks in advance, but sadly it was not going to come in time for Valentine's Day. It actually ended up arriving like the day after, but he was still in my hometown at this point and the ring was back where he lived. So Josh needed a substitute ring and his mom had one that was made from a spoon from a silverware set that his grandma had. And he liked that the ring was made from something from his grandma. And so he picked that one to propose to me with. And so that's how I got proposed to in a Culver's with a spoon on Valentine's Day. <laughs> and honestly, anytime I say that, it makes me smile and laugh. It's such a random sounding sentence. <laughs> After Culver's, we went to look at a few more rentals. We were trying to look at as many as we could before Josh had to go back home. Then we went back to my family's house. And as I'm walking in, I can see my sister scanning me, looking to see if I had a ring on. I then flash my hand up and chaos ensues. My family was all very excited and happy for us. We accidentally woke up Reagan who was sleeping, uh, but she was also happy for us. So Josh and I were now officially engaged. Thankfully, one of the apartment complexes we reached out to ended up having a two bedroom unit available for April. I was so thankful for this. It felt like God answered our prayers. However, a bit of a hiccup happened. The person in the unit we were supposed to get ended up not moving. However, we had already signed papers and paid a down payment for the unit. So until the apartment complex could figure things out, they gave Josh a one bedroom apartment until a two bedroom became available. We didn't need the two bedroom at the time, so we were just happy Josh would have a place to live. In April, Josh and his parents came to my hometown. Josh and his parents, along with me and my parents, helped move all of the furniture in. Also, funny story that happened while we were moving stuff. This was the first time Josh and I had seen each other in person since we got engaged. So it had been like two months. And we were very happy to see each other. We were on the elevator coming back down to grab more boxes to move. Well, on the elevator, we were exchanging a quick kiss because it was the only spot with a bit of privacy. But then the doors open and my dad and a random guy are standing there. <laughs> my dad jokingly goes, oh, busted. And I felt so embarrassed, <laughs> but it was also really funny. I felt bad for the random guy just standing there. Anyways, we finished moving all of Josh's stuff and then we all went out to have pizza. Now that Josh lived in the same town as me, we were no longer long distance. We could finally just see each other in person and date normally. We felt like we had overcome a major hurdle. That being said, the months leading up to the wedding were definitely not easy and were also very busy. I was trying my best to plan a wedding and keep up with work. Josh was adjusting to a new town and a new job. Oh, and we also eventually had to move Josh out of the one bedroom apartment into the two bedroom that became available. He and I did this all on our own. We joked that I should have gotten my siblings to help us, but at the same time, we felt like it was a good bonding experience. 
So now let's talk a bit about the wedding planning process. I was both excited and very nervous to plan my wedding, mostly because I had no idea what I was doing. I watched so many videos on weddings as I was getting work done and also reading different articles in my free time. Now I could have gotten a wedding planner, but like I said, I'm kind of cheap, so I didn't really want to pay for one. So I was trying to do everything myself. One of the first things we decided was where we would hold the ceremony. We decided to have it at the church that I've gone to for basically my whole life. We asked the pastor of the church if he could officiate the wedding, and I was super glad that he agreed to. I've known him since I was a toddler, so it meant a lot to me. The next thing I wanted to check off the list was getting a dress. Now I know it's common for girls to daydream about their wedding day and what kind of dress they want to wear, but I never really put much thought into it. And to be honest, for many years because of my social anxiety, the idea of having a wedding and needing to stand and talk in front of people sounded horrifying. So I would often try to not think about it. However, now I was quite excited for the wedding. Anyways, my mom, two of my sisters, my sister-in-law and I all went wedding dress shopping. When we arrived at the wedding dress shop, we learned that we needed to make an appointment. They didn't mention this on their website. Uh, but thankfully they had an opening available in about an hour. And we noticed that we were all very hungry, so we all went and got Wendy's. We were all very happy we ate food so that we could do this on full tummies. Things go much more smoothly when you've been fed. <laughs> Once it was time for my appointment, we started picking dresses. In my head, I thought that maybe I'd like something with sleeves. But we chose many different styles since I wasn't totally sure what I wanted. I tried on a good handful of dresses and ended up not liking any of the options with sleeves. But in the end, I was torn between two options, this dress and this dress. I really loved both of them. However, this dress was a bit uncomfortable around the neck and I didn't know how I felt about some of the details. I tried on both dresses again and when I tried on this one, I felt like it was the right fit for me. So I got to say yes to the dress. And honestly, dress shopping was probably the most fun part of the wedding planning process. And maybe the only fun part, to be honest. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it was fun thinking about the big day and planning out some of the details, but also super stressful. Thankfully, overall, the process went smoothly. My mom and I bought a bunch of wedding stuff on sale or from thrift stores. I got invites sent out. We were finding clothes for my siblings had the cake ordered, had a florist and photographer booked. The wedding day was growing closer and closer and with it my nervousness and my excitement grew. The days leading up to the wedding are all kind of a blur to be honest. Josh and I both had family coming into town. We were trying to finish up last minute details and let's just say emotions did run high this week. Uh, especially the night before the wedding, Josh and I were at my family's house finishing up any last minute details and the whole time I was trying to not break down in tears. I wanted to cry but I didn't totally know why. Was I happy, excited, nervous, scared? I didn't know what I was feeling, but the feelings were overwhelming. But something I did know is that this would be the last night I slept in my room. This would be the last night I lived in the same house as my family. At this point, my room was basically empty. I had moved almost all of my belongings over to the apartment. It felt like a chapter of my life was ending, but a new one was also just beginning. Thankfully, I ended up getting some sleep that night. I woke up, forced myself to eat a bit of breakfast, and my mom dropped me off at my hair appointment. For the next two hours, I was getting my hair and makeup done. It was my first time getting this done by a professional. Sitting there in the salon and making small talk about the wedding with a stylist helped ease out the nerves I was feeling. Although I did get a bit nervous when we had to redo my bun three different times and the appointment was going much longer than I anticipated, but eventually she got it. She turned me around and it was weird seeing myself with so much makeup. So this was very different, but at the same time I liked it and I knew it would photograph well. Because the appointment did take a bit longer than anticipated, I ended up arriving back late to the house and our photographer was already there. Thankfully, she was super sweet and used this time to take pics of my family getting ready. And my family getting ready equals chaos. We were all running around getting dressed, taking pictures and trying to make sure we didn't forget anything. It felt like a mad dash before the wedding. <laughs> Thankfully, we were able to leave right on time, and I remember as we were heading out the door, I said, you know, I think I feel calmer today than I did on my first date with Josh. <laughs> Before my date with Josh, I was on the bathroom floor crying, but here I was now on my wedding day, so excited to see him and to become his wife. 
We drive over to the church, and through the front window, I could see the back of Josh's head. We planned for him to not see me. We wanted to do a first look picture to reveal my dress to him. So when my family and I walked in, his groomsmen had to guide him around so that he wouldn't see me. Also, because I do have a large family, we decided to take pictures before the ceremony. That way we could take our time, and there wouldn't have to be a long wait in between the ceremony and the reception. Anyways, we do the big reveal, and I finally get to see him for the first time that day, and I was so happy to see him. And it felt so great being able to give him a hug and finally see him. We then proceed to take a bunch of photos, and they went a lot smoother than anticipated. You never know with my family. Sometimes photos can take a really long time, but it went okay. Once photos were done, it was time for the guests to arrive. I went into a back room with a lot of my family, and they were eating McDonald's because they were hungry. I was a bit hungry, but I also felt like I didn't want to eat. I think I just sipped on a soda or something. The guests were arriving, and one by one my siblings left the room to get ready for the ceremony to start. At this point, my nerves were getting worked up again. I started pacing around the room and shaking my arms to help work them all off. I remember my pastor walked into the room and gave me some encouragement, but honestly I don't remember a word of what he said. <laughs> but I know it made me feel a lot better. Thankfully we had a rehearsal the day before, and so I knew what I needed to do and when to do it. I was just hoping I would do everything right. I came out the back room on cue, stood next to my dad, and we linked arms. When I looked at my dad, I could tell he was choked up and holding back tears. We exchanged some sentimental words, and it was our turn to walk down the aisle. The ceremony went very smoothly. I was so happy I didn't trip over my dress. <laughs> Earlier when we were taking pictures, we wanted some up on the stage. And when I walked onto the stairs, I tripped over my dress and a new fear was unlocked. I was like, oh no, what if I do that during the ceremony? Uh, but thankfully I didn't. I didn't trip. Everything went smoothly. It was good. But there was no time to rest now. Josh and I rush over to the reception venue to take some outdoor pictures of us. And I'm really happy we did that. They are some of my favorite pictures. We then went inside and started to greet the guests as they came in. There were so many hugs and well wishes. And I got to see a lot of family that I hadn't seen in so long. I was nervous for how the reception would play out. But it went very smoothly as well. The food was delicious, our families gave speeches that brought tears and many smiles. We had our first dance, where I messed up the only move we practiced, <laughs> but it was still good. I did a father-daughter dance with my dad, and throughout it he told me how much he loved me and how proud he was of me. My dad doesn't show his emotions often, so these words meant a lot to me. Josh also did a mother and son dance with his mom, and him and his mom cried basically the whole time. It was really sweet. It was almost surreal going through this day after so much thinking and planning. It was now actually happening and going much smoother than I thought it would. It was truly a day to remember. As the night went on, the guests started to leave. Josh and I said our goodbyes. And we head out to find that the car had been decked out in wedding stuff by Josh's family. It was actually very cute and I enjoyed it. There were so many balloons in the back seat. <laughs> As Josh and I drove home, we were kind of in a whirl of like disbelief, but also amazement. We were now actually married. We did it. And the day went better than we could have hoped. Also, when we got back to the apartment, Josh surprised me with a precious moment. It was so sweet and I wasn't expecting it at all. Josh and I have now been married for seven months and we are both very happy. He and I often joke that we didn't think that an online dating site would actually work. If I went back in time and told myself that I would actually get married to a man that I met on the dating site that I was signing up for, I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> but I'm so happy that it did. Now that he's in my life, it's hard to imagine life without him. 
In stories, weddings are often the end of the story, but I know our journey is just beginning. With him by my side, I've learned so much about myself and grown so much, and I'm so excited to continue this journey alongside my best friend and the love of my life. So that is the story of our engagement and wedding. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!